G'day YouTube! A lot of people have been begging me basically to show them how to install Easy Drummer on Linux. So here we go, and we can apply this to Amplitube as well, which I'll likely go over as well. It's been a while since I've done it, so I might have to fumble my way through it a little bit. I might make some mistakes along the way, but I'll try to edit those out and uh, try to keep it as concise as possible and hopefully easy to follow. Uh, check the description below for links or stuff that you have to copy and paste, but uh, read the links that I'm giving you as well, and you can just copy and paste from there. Alright, I did a fresh install of Linux Mint for this, so I've got nothing installed yet. Alright, so you have to go to this link, it's in the description below. We need to install Wine Staging. Now, there might be multiple versions of wine staging that works with this, but the only one that I've gotten to work is 7.19, so I'm going to stick with that. Alright, so just follow, on, follow along, I suppose. Copy and paste at your will and desire. We need to add 32-bit architecture. So, I'm just going to do a copy and paste job. Nice and lazy. Obviously, if you're using a different version of Linux that's not Debian-based, you have to make adjustments for that. For example, the package is a uh, Debian package manager thing apt. So uh, if you're using something like, I don't know, Arch Linux or Manjaro or other distros, this won't work. So find out how to add 32 bit to your package manager for whatever distro you're using. Right, adding the key rings. Get in the key. Alright. So this only mentions Debian based distros, of course. Uh, select your Ubuntu version. So I'm using Mint, the latest Mint, um, which is OS release Linux Mint 21.1 which is based on... Oh look, it even says here. It's based on Ubuntu 22.04. It even says there, Linux Mint 21. Alright, let's add the sources for wine staging. Alright, apt update. Let's get rid of that. Updating the package manager. Alright, now we can install the wine staging version that we need. Now, if you follow this, it will just install the latest. Just use this command to install 7.19. Just going to change that to 7.19. I'll have this in the description below. But, uh, or you can just copy this into a text editor and just change it to 7.19 if you want or just copy it from my description change that to 7.19 and we can just copy and paste that into the terminal and it should be good paste And it'll grab everything you need. I've tried forcing 7.19 in the Synaptic Package Manager on Debian before, but it, for some reason it wouldn't cooperate. After you find the version that works, you can then lock it in your Package Manager though, so that any updates, upgrades, it won't change the version of uh, wine staging so you'll keep the one that works all right we're done assuming you want to keep that version but this is to lock this version in the package manager okay set on hold it will not upgrade to a different version and if you look in here now sudo apt cache policy oops 
wine staging. We've installed 7.19. The candidate is 8.10, but I don't want that version. All right, what now? We need Yar Bridge. What is Yar Bridge? Bloody read it. <laughs> Yet another way to use Windows audio plugins on Linux. Easy Drummer and Amplitude work a lot better on Linux when you use it as a like a VST in a digital audio workstation like Ardor. So we're definitely going to need this. All right, installation on Arch and Manjaro. It can be installed from the official repositories, but I don't think it's on this. Apt search ya bridge. Nah. Oh, I'm not even sure if there's incompatibilities between versions. I mean, I've, I've used an older version of ya bridge, but uh, I'll try the latest. That one, that shouldn't matter, but it doesn't matter which version of wine staging you're using. Because it can work on one version of wine staging and not a newer one, or vice versa. Alright, downloading it. Here it is. Alright, let's just cut and paste this into the right location. If you push Control H in your home directory, you can see the hidden folders. So we need to go into dot local share, and we can we can extract it in here after pasting it. Extract here. So to run any commands from now on, you'd have to manually put in the location and then the uh, Yarbridge CTL and then whatever command you want. Alternatively, we can add it to our path. This will be in the description below, but let's export path to Yarbridge to the end of .bash RC. Alright, so if you go into text editor like nano dot bash rc that's in the home directory we'll just go nano home your username dot bash rc and then at the very bottom just paste this like I said it's in the description below or just read it straight off the link save it Control X, Y, Enter. Now you can execute commands just by typing Yarbridge, CTL, whatever. Let's have a look. Huh? That's why it's not working. I forgot about this. And it doesn't mention it here. Unless I'm blind, it doesn't tell you how to apply the environmental variable after you've added it. So after you've added this line in dot bash RC, you have to apply it by typing source space dot bash RC. Now it shows up. If you just run Yarbridge CTL, it tells you what commands you can use for it. Alright, now we're rock and rolling. Alright, so we've got everything we need now except for Easy Drummer and Amplitude. So assuming you've purchased and downloaded those, we are going to go ahead and install it. Or if you didn't purchase it. <coughs> So now you want to install Easy Drummer. That one. At this point, you should be able to right click 
and just use the wine program loader. Okay, let it install whatever it wants. Wine mono packages. Alright, here we go. Do your usual Windows next, next, next clickies. So you should be able to go through now and install all the packages that you need. So go ahead and install whatever you need to install if you've got extra sound packs and all that sort of crap. Go ahead and install it with Wine. Alright, so I've went ahead and installed all the little packages that I needed for EasyDriver, and voila. Alright. Now, you get some minor little graphical glitches sometimes, but uh, everything works. Now, also you can install Amplitube the same way. As you can see, this version is Amplitube 5.0.1 and it works fine. Oh, just a little note, it could be my imagination, but I think it is a little bit better in terms of latency if you've got the um, output device in the audio settings. Well, assuming you've got an audio interface with your studio speakers connected to it, that's why I've got my setup run, and uh, I just pick the audio interface that I'm using for my speakers. Might apply to you, might not, but... I think it's a little tiny bit better. Alright, so now Amplitube is installed and it runs. Doesn't run great. There's quite a bit of lag. But, um... It runs perfect when you use it in your digital audio workstation. And it will probably run better after I enable Jack. If you're using a digital audio workstation, you'll probably want to use Jack or the front end for it, QJack CTL. This will probably run better. Advanced. Input is the Scarlet. Output is the Scarlet. Because I've got my studio speakers connected to this. Otherwise, whatever your speakers are. Um, real time enabled, yep. Yeah. 48,000. Now, I can't remember how I used to set this. I think that was on 3. And this, we'll try on 128. Start her up. And the tube. I thought you can connect this to Jack. Well, you can if you just launch your digital audio workstation with Jack running anyway. That's where it sounds best. Pulse audio. Well, anyways.
So we're going to run it in the door anyway. All right, let's try to run our digital audio workstation. Oh, hang on a minute. We need Jack for this. Uh, door. Test. All right. Connect it, Jack. Connect. Oh, that's weird. I mean, we did add real time during the setup. I always recommend just installing a real time kernel anyway. Whatever distro you got, if you go to package manager and search for a real time kernel. then we won't get this error. And your package manager will install whatever packages you need. And then you reboot into the right kernel. So install the, the real-time kernel if you can. Otherwise, you might have to take real-time off. But we want real-time, but I'm not going to install a new kernel right now and muck about. I just want to show you that it works. Test. Let's see if the plugins are detected. Not plugins, you know. Easy drummer. Nah. Nah, yeah, nah. Nah. Let's try Ya Bridge CTL Sync. So any plugins, VSTs or whatever that's in your home directory, it should now detect. Now we need to add the ones that we installed, well, you know, Amplitube and uh, Easy Drummer. That's installed in the Wine directory. So if you go to your home directory, dot wine, drive C, program files, VST plugins, that should be the directory. It's got the Tune Track Easy Drummer DLL file in there. And the amplitude one. Let's see if this works. Yeah, bridge CTL add, and that directory where the VST plugins folder is. No, maybe I have to do it in quotes. Oh, I think that worked. Yeah, bridge. CTL sync. Yeah, bridge CTL list. Oh, there you go. It's done it. Hopefully, now it will show up. So, if you've got Jack running, we'll run our duel. And with a bit of luck, it will all be good. Test two. Track. I'm going to add MIDI. Where are ya? Okay. Go to Edit, Preferences. Plugins, scan for plugins. We might have to add it in here manually. Edit, preferences. Let's have a look in here under plugins, or maybe VST. Ah, here we go. Ah, okay. 
there's a .vst file in the home directory under yarbridge let's add that so your home user .vst yarbridge Oh, Linux VST2 path. Let's add home dot VST Yarbridge. Okay. Scan. Yes. Here we go. Amplitude 5. Like I said, I'm going to fumble my way through this and maybe make some mistakes. But now it's showing up. Excellent. So now, if you want to load up Easy Drummer, it will show up here. Easy Drummer. Add. Click on the track there, Easy Drummer. Oh, hang on can't see how do we expand this view show editor mixer and up here is easy drummer Beautiful, now we can do shit like create beats, drag it into the workstation, and start making songs and shit. And besides a bit of minor graphical glitches, there's like no lag here. Works really well. Like I said, it works a lot better in your door than it does on the desktop. I don't think I've had as much luck running Amplitude stable in the Ardor digital audio workstation. Let's have a look here. Plugin selector. Type in Amplitude. Load it. Double click. Insert plugin. I think I had some stability issues with it running in Ardor. But, um... What I did was inst I installed the Linux experimental version of Reaper and I run it through that and it works nice and stable. Then you can open our door and send it to our door if you want. I haven't um, done the purchase yet for this. So everything's locked at the moment. So this is what you do. Go get Reaper. Download. Get the Linux version. Fuck off with the updates. Alright. Extract. I think it just runs from the file. Reaper. Ah, oh, it's automatically detecting Amplitude 5 there, and it should do the same with Easy Drummer. Alright, add track on effects amplitude add it works perfect no lag beautiful 
So you can leave this running and then open our door. All right, so if you wanted to record from Amplitude, just go into inputs, disable the capture there because you'll get just the clean sound. Go down to other and click on Reaper, out one. <laughs> I need to register this before I can start changing amps and adding pedals and stuff. I can't be bothered right now. But, um, yeah. So you set up Amplitude however you bloody want. And then you can record within our door now. Only weird thing is, this has only happened since I've plugged my studio monitors into my uh, audio interface, is... <laughs> When I hit the record button, it sort of doubles up. It's playing, you know, it's monitored in uh, Reaper and it plays back, and then it's also playing back on our door. So it sounds a bit weird when it combines. Because two instances of playback is coming through. I suppose I can disable it. Oh, there you go. Now it's not doing it. Yeah, so it's not playing back twice now. But even when it does that double playback thing, when you record a track down, it doesn't play the weird one. It, it, it does it as it should. But now I can't play it back. Until I enable this. Well, anyways, there you go. That will get you started. And now, hopefully, you can use Easy Drummer and Amplitude on Linux successfully. Hell yeah. One way to get around that little minor issue with the double playback, I suppose, uh, is you can just use Reaper as your main digital audio workstation on Linux. That way, there's no double playback. Someone wants me. Could now, uh, you know, lay down your tracks. And whatever. Well, there you go, anyway. That's enough for me. I hope this helps you guys out. Why hasn't anyone else covered this shit? I would think that a multitude of uh, other Linux users, you know, would have covered this video, but I haven't seen any. Alright. Caddy signing out. Have fun with it. Good olds. <laughs>